Hello, and welcome to this overview of Chapter 1, Introduction to Business Analytics. The learning objectives for Chapter 1 are first, we're going to explain the importance of business analytics and also describe the concept of business analytics. We'll also explain the various types of data that is used in analytics. We'll describe variables and types of measurement scales and also discuss the difference between various data sources and file formats, all to set the foundation for the business analytics practice and discipline. First, an overview of business analytics. Over the last several years, technology has emerged for the amount of data that we have at our disposal about our business and customers. Data and analytics capabilities have made a leap forward over the last several years. It's growing in the availability of vast amounts of data improved computational power, and the development of sophisticated algorithms. With this vast technology on the amount of data at our disposal, how to use it for artificial intelligence and machine learning, and as well as the ability to have ongoing innovation when it comes to how we analyze our business, business analytics is an emerging field in the market today. Colleges and universities have curriculum emphasizing business analytics, which didn't even exist really even 10 to 20 years ago. It's an emerging field with an actual course like this and other majors where you can actually major in the field. Data and analytics capabilities have changed the way businesses make decisions. We're looking for more data-driven decisions than ever before to rely on fact and value of data versus just instinct and intuition. Companies need more data-savvy professionals. They're looking to per turn more data into actions and insights. Business analytics involves extracting information and knowledge from data. We're looking at data fields and information to truly drive decisions or to find out influence of what we can do to create new strategies. We're trying to impact many areas of the business, such as improve bottom line profitability, enhance the customer experience, develop better marketing strategies, deepen our customer engagement, even enhance efficiency and reduce expenses and processes to find out ways where we can automate or really make time sensitive material more efficient to share information. We can identify emerging markets and we can even mitigate risk and fraud. Business analytics is widely applied across many business subjects and departments from marketing to human resource management, economics, finance, health, sports, and politics, any major field that has a major amount of data that we can use to look at trends and patterns to provide potential foresight and insight into the business or overall industry is the use of business analytics today. Business analytics though is a broad topic. It does cover a quite a few varieties of technology and types of business discipline, such as statistics. Statistics is a foundational measure of probability and other types of formulas that really truly build a foundation for business analytics. It involves computer science and programming and the involvement of information systems. Business analytics though differs from data science. Data science is the development of application for end users. Whereas there's, we're doing more in data science with more statistical variance and more in-depth type of application-based programming for our analytical needs. Whereas business analytics is more data analysis for business applications, more of a direct input from a business strategy perspective. Business analytics combines qualitative reasoning with quantitative tools. We identify key business problems or opportunities. We also translate data analysis into decisions, which is truly important in business analytics is how to take data and apply it for decision-making and strategy. We can do that and also improve business performance. In addition, business analytics begins with understanding the business context. We need to know where to focus our effort in analysis so we have the right tangible output of information to serve our business. We need to ask the right questions or develop the right hypothesis. We need to identify the appropriate analysis format and method. And when we have the results and information, we need to communicate that information at the right time at the right place to the right audience to make decisions. Numerical results are not very useful unless they are accompanied with a clearly stated actionable business insight. 
We need to make sure we can tell a story with the data. Business analytics is translating the data into tangible insights, recommendations, and decisions. There are three different types of analytical techniques. Descriptive analytics is based off of time and place and what has happened from a historical perspective. Predictive analytics builds upon that and what could happen in the future. Whereas prescriptive analytics is a step further to get more precise in giving a potential result on specifically what should we do. Turning data-driven recommendations into action also requires thoughtful consideration and organizational commitment beyond developing descriptive and predictive analytical models. We must make our decisions based off the data we have and be more precise in our strategies. The following diagram provides an overview on the evolution and maturity of analytics in organizations. As you can see on the left side there, it provides descriptive analytics on the questions of what has happened. Future chapters will talk more about how to manage data to set the foundation for descriptive analytics, data wrangling, visualization, and under-supervised data mining. The basic foundation of business analytics is in the overall ability to manage the data, make sure it's the right kind of data, and to make sure it's foundational for future types of analytics. The value is there, it is a very important part, but it's the foundation for further analytics to drive more value to the organization. Taking it a step further, as we move up the value chain of business analytics, we have predictive. What will happen in the future? In future chapters, we'll talk about regression, supervised data mining, and forecasting as the next level methods of predictive analytics to look at the foresight of patterns based off historical trends to look at potential future trends based off the insights of the data. And then precisely, we get to prescriptive analytics on what should we do. True optimization, simulation exercises in chapter 13, but also what we really do talk about is how the data can evolve from descriptive all the way to prescriptive in the value it drives an organization. So in the course, we'll dive into each of these analytics types further, but we will talk about though the framework and how these are built and applied. First, in descriptive analytics, on answering the question, what has happened, we're first gathering the right information and the right data. Make sure that the information and data has a credible source. We know where it's coming from and how to manage it for our analytical model. We organize it in a way that really makes sense to us for internal data fields and making sure that it fits the alignment of our analytical system. We tabulate it, meaning that we put it into a table, which is a chart and graph to make sure it makes sense from us from a both Y and X axis perspective. We visualize it, we put it into some type of graph or bar chart or overall element to tell the story of the data better, and then we summarize our insights. Truly what's important here is to summarize, provide the key in indicators of what's taking place so that executives and other audience members can get the key insights to help them understand where to take the strategy further. Descriptive information can be presented in a number of formats. We can write reports, build tables, graphs, or different types of maps. There's different visualization techniques, which we'll look at further in this course. Descriptive analytics is also referred to as business intelligence, or BI. It's the ability to access and manipulate data through reports, dashboards, application, and visual tools. It uses past data integrated from multiple sources to inform decision-making and identify problems and solutions. It's truly leveraging the word intelligence, providing the right insight and information to make effective decisions based off the data. It's really important to know that data can come from multiple sources both internal from a company and external. We'll spend more time in future chapters talking about sources and how to obtain them and manage them. Examples of descriptive analytics are a firm's marketing expense and sales, financial reports, and even for a, let's say, law enforcement agency, crime rates across regions and time. Descriptive analytics, again, are what could happen in the future. It uses historical data to make predictions. Its analytical models help identify associations. At times, it looks at one element versus another and how they correlate or align together. Associations used to estimate the likelihood of a favorable outcome. Just like the weather, when we look at the weather, we look at different parameters of the weather, precipitation, the temperature, other things that say, well, whether or not it's going to rain, that's the same thing here in predictive analytics. 
weather forecasters use a meteorologist predictive analytics to tell the weather based on multiple variables. Same thing happens here in predictive analytics. We're looking at multiple patterns and sets of data to tell a potential outcome of the future. Commonly considered advanced predictions. In this element, we build models that help an organization understand what might happen in the future. And this is definitely where statistics are involved in deep data mining. Examples are identifying customers who are more, most likely to respond to a specific marketing campaign. If you think about a time you've ever gotten a marketing campaign or advertisement, let's say emailed to you or sent to you on a mobile app, push notification, or some marketing element, that's where predictive analytics come in. It sets a trend of historical data based off the views of a website you went to or visited or clicked on and uses that information to send a future ad to you to where you may react to it. That's using predictive analytics. Another example is transactions that are likely to be fraudulent based off, you know, previous activity and patterns in the data that show fraudulent activity. And even again, law enforcement can use it to find incidents of a crime at certain region and times based on historical trends for predictive analytic usage. Predictive analytics, again, are what should we do? It's more precise. Optimization and simulation algorithms provide advice. You can explore several possible actions. It gives you an output of recommendations or clearly option A, B, or C with a likelihood and significant value that whether or not this is going to occur will be in the analytics. It's commonly considered advanced predictions and it's model building that help an organization understand what might happen in the future with more advanced statistics and data mining. An example could be based off trends of the business, how we schedule employees work hours to make sure that we have coverage in a particular busy time or non-busy time. To select a mix of products and manufacturer and choose an investment portfolio, all based off prescriptive insights for the future. Foundation of business analytics though, is now discussing the types of data. Data is the foundation to anything you do in analytics and it must be managed and it must be precise and accurate. An important first step to making decisions is to find the right data and prepare it. It's a compilation of facts, figures, or other content. Now there is numerical and non-numerical data, information that is factual or, or qualitative based on insight. All types and formats are generated from multiple sources. There's often that we have a large amount of data, also known as big data, which we'll talk about shortly. Even small data can give insight. So it's not saying we don't use small pieces of data at times. It just depends on the analysis that we're conducting, whether or not certain data is valuable versus other. Data that have been organized, analyzed, and processed in a meaningful and purposeful, purposeful way become credible information to use. We use a blend of data, contextual information, experience, and intuition to derive to that knowledge. Just because we have the data doesn't mean we have all the insight necessary. We must use data to provide inferential, assumption-based, or directional information at times. It is not feasible to collect data that comprise a population of all elements of interest. Sometimes we don't have all the data at our disposal. It can be too expensive or near impossible to get all the information that we seek. So we must use the, the best amount of data to our, to our ability. And at times, a sample size is a subset of the population and is used for analysis. Let's say you have millions of customer data. You can't look at all million customers on a regular basis. So you pick a decent percentage of that to analyze to say, predictability and prescriptive analytics based on that sample size. Traditional statistical techniques use sample information to draw conclusions about the overall population. Further types of data, cross-sectional data. This is collected by recording a characteristic of many subjects at the same point in time. Recording a characteristic of many subjects at the same point in time allows us to understand that if there are any shared common views or responses to our overall investigation or research. Market research or other types of business research is involved to identify commonality or trends and patterns that are really unified amongst different respondents or pattern trends. Time series data is collected over several time periods focusing on certain groups of people, events, or objects. This is where we look at things and analyze it from a timeline perspective. We can look at things hourly, daily, weekly, all the way to annually. It all depends on your business strategy and situation. For example, if you're in e-commerce selling an, uh, 
a daily deal of something and it's a one-day campaign or sell, you may look at your trends daily to find out the impact of that marketing campaign or deal one day versus the other. Annually, maybe it's a long-term strategy where it, needs, it takes a long time for a trend to develop over a year. And you want to look at multiple years to find out what's going to occur in your market or business strategy based on an annual perspective. Knowing the right timeline is important because it helps justify where to invest and where to build strategies for the future based on similar timelines. Here's an example of a table and just basic data that you can look at that's really foundational. You have descriptive analytics here based on the team and their overall wins and losses and winning percentage. This is very much a rank and file to find out who's the most winning team versus losses, but it also gives you the ability to take it a step further if you wanted to, to look at trends and patterns of which team may end up winning the overall championship or progress down the overall uh, league. You can look at this historical data and look at Milwaukee Bucks, for example, having the most wins and the less amount of losses. And if that trend continues, they could perhaps be one of the top teams in the league. However, Toronto Raptors had less wins and more losses, but still ended up winning the overall championship when the year that this occurred. So it doesn't mean though that Toronto Raptors, because at this point in time, based on descriptive analytics, had any trend of not going to win the overall championship. It just means that it correlated that they did over time. Just another example of how to look at different types of data. This is more time series. In this time series, we can look at the year over year uh, comparison of home ownership rate, the percentage of Americans owning homes. And as you can see, it did dip from about 2006 to 2014. And we all know the Great Recession was an impact of that. But we can look at a timeline perspective and say how it grew in the early 2000s of the number of percentage of homeowners out there and how that declined over time. This would be important if we wanted to understand the trend on an annual basis of, you know, selling homes and home ownership rates for different mortgage companies and stuff like that. So we can see it's back up on a trend of the last few years. But again, another timeline series perspective on an example of the time series data. There are various types of structures of data. First, structured data. Structured data generally is the type of data that you really want to use to conduct your analytics. It's a predefined and row column format, generally in a spreadsheet or database type of application. You can enter, store, query, and analyze the data and the numerical information that is objective and not open to interpretation. It's structured, it's very factual, it's very straightforward, and generally easier to digest into an analytical model. Historically, companies relied mostly on structured data, such as the high cost to store and process and performance limitations. Generally, this type of data is foundational to many things we've done in analytics for many years. In today's world, though, of getting so many different data sources, we also have unstructured data. It does not conform to a predefined row column format. It's textual, it's multimedia content, and does not conform to debate database structures. This is generally human or machine generated, more higher volume algorithms and big data oriented. Structured human, price, income, retail sales, many factors that face the overall uh, demographics of certain co companies or customers depend on the volume and the variety of different data points they have. Unstructured data is multiple different data sets all mixed together at times that where you need a data mine to really get in there and decipher what is the overall data source you're looking to use and how to make a strategy with it. Other examples such as structured machine, unstructured human, we have different elements of how we react as humans and consumers to emails, text, social media, and others. All the different views and different things we do as respondents to our marketing elements all matter here. So again, unstructured data is very valuable. It's very versatile and complex though, and you need to be very skilled at data mining it to making sense of how to use it. One key term that is being used a lot in business today is the word big data. Businesses are generating more and more data at an increasing pace. It's a massive volume of data that is both structured and unstructured. It can be extremely difficult to manage, process, and analyze using traditional data processing tools. So we need more sophistication, more sophisticated tools to truly manage the data. When done right though, it can present great opportunities to gain knowledge and game-changing intelligence. 
big data may not be used when available. So it's very really, uh, challenging at times to make big decisions off data-driven insights if you don't have the big data disposable to you. So we must be able to generate benefits from it, but it can be costly if we don't invest into how to manage the big data. Big data management can be an investment, but if done right, can provide a positive return on investment. Garter.com has widely accepted this definition of big data. The bottom line definition of big data is high volume, high velocity, and or high variety information assets that demand cost effective, innovative forms of information processes that enable enhanced insights, decision making, and process of in automation. It's a next level advanced analytics type framework to manage all this data. It's a fast paced environment that truly needs high sophisticated tools and very trained analysts to understand how to assimilate it and manage it in a time of need for business analytics. Three characteristics of big data. First, volume. Immense amount of data compiled for a single or multiple sources. Large amounts of storage and generally today's environment, the cloud-based storage to truly optimize the the ability to collect this information. The velocity generated at a rapid speed and management is a critical issue of this. Then the variety. We get data in so many types, forms, granularity, structured or unstructured. Additional characteristics though are also veracity. The credibility and quality of the data is also something to keep in mind, the reliability. Sometimes we'll get data that isn't authentic, is being double counted, isn't a, a tangible source or a source that really makes sense or data that's even useful. So we must make sure that it's also useful and good quality data. The values, methodological plan for formulating questions, curating the right data and unlocking hidden potential. We must understand the value of the data as we ingest it and clean up data if it's ever a time we don't need it anymore. Data can be very much hard to manage if we don't look at it on a regular basis. Having a plethora of data does not guarantee that useful insights or measurable improvements will be generated. That's why managing the data, going through the data and understanding the data is what makes insights measurable and impactful. Next part of business analytics is understanding variables and skills of measurement. A variable is a characteristic of interest that differs in kind of degree among various observations or records. These are basically records. They are actual the descriptive insight or data point that you're using for analytics. There are two types, categorical and numerical. Categorical, also known as qualitative, they represent categories. Think about a survey. Think about if someone says yes or no to liking something or a scale of one to five and they provide a you know three star rating on something. That's qualitative and that's categorical, okay? It explains a characteristic of what someone thinks it's also a something that can actually change as well. For example, marital status. Someone can be single and then become married. That's categorical. So it's, not, it's a point in time, but also can change as you analyze as well. It's coded into numbers for data processing. So even though someone may put yes or no on a survey as a response, you may code it though, zero or one for yes and no, because you still need numerical values to generate analytics based off algorithms and statistical formulas. So you're still going to get to obtain the variable of categorical variables that are qualitative. You're definitely going to change them into numbers. And we'll talk more about that in a future lecture. Numerical values are quantitative. They represent meaningful numbers. They derive from other rhythmic operations and truly have a numerical value in the values. Such as an example, it is almost saying a concrete fact. The number of children in a family is a concrete fact. Something about the amount of money at a certain point in time someone has is a numerical value. It very much is a point in time, but doesn't really change as much based on the analysis at the time. Analysis techniques depend on the type of data you're using. There are four major scales. And a scale is a measurement though. When you look at the data between categorical and numerical, there are ways to measure it nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Nominal is categorical usually and least, least sophisticated. Its value is different by label or name. So again, nominal is very close to categorical value. 
The measurement is someone, something that can change from one step to the other. Marital status, it could be someone's preference. They like something, then they do like it. That's categorical. Ordinal is more of a ranking. Categorical still, but it's now an ordinal measure. So think about that. Both nominal and ordinal are just measurement points, how to measure it, where the value itself are both so categorical. Like I said before, a rating from one star to five stars, one being poor and five being outstanding, someone can still change their mind later, right? They go back, they try that experience or product again, and they actually change their mind from going from a three-star review to a four-star review. That is ordinal as in it can change over time, but it's still categorical, horrible, bearable, because it's a person's opinion and it's a qualitative insight. An interval is a numerical value and an interval measurement is categorized in rank. Differences are meaningful. So for example, zero values arbitrary does not reflect absence of a characteristic. Ratios are not meaningful. This is an interval, like intervals of temperature or intervals of time. Intervals are giving you a time series value at some point to say this is where the fluctuation is up or down. Inflation and pricing is another interval of time and money. So therefore, interval is more of a numerical measurement and overall measurement of a time series type data. A ratio is numerical and it's most sophisticated. A true zero point reflects absence of a characteristic and ratios are meaningful. Profits or saying for every two customers, they get one of this or three to one ratios. Ratios are very important because we can do that to build strategies around how to build a multiplier effect of certain strategies based off a ratio driven insight. Data sources and file formats. First, a data source is truly that, a source of where you're going to retrieve that information. And in the big data environment of today's business, we both have internal sources and external sources or third parties. 90% of the data in the world today was created in the last two years, meaning that the evolution of technology and overall time has increased the amount of data out there. Data sources for this book mostly come from Google. So you will see throughout this book, various elements from all these sources that you can read below that are useful. But remember, so many data sources exist and depending on your business and your industry, the sources could be very uh, finite or very vast. It just depends on your overall value proposition or business model and what you offer. So it's important to understand those sources and then vet them out to find out if you need the source or not for your data and business analytics. There are standard file formats that you work with in analytics. The fixed width format, each column starts and ends in the same place in every row, where a delimited format is a delimiter separated by fields, typically a comma or CSV file. So a fixed width format is pretty much a straightforward spreadsheet for the most part. You have a top row and left side row, uh, horizontal and vertical, where delimited is more of a list perspective where it's separated by a comma. There are three widely used markup languages. The XML or extensible markup language, which is structured data, each piece enclosed in a pair of tags gives information of what the data are. Hypertext market markup language, HTML. This is used a lot for coding on websites and other things for content. It's structured data with tags, gives more information on how to display the data. Then you have JavaScript object no notation, which is JSON. Alternative to X XML, transmit human readable data in compact files. Not as verbose as XML, but supports wide range of data types. Parsing is faster. So depending on your analytical model and framework, these are the different languages you may work. We'll discuss these in more detail in a future lecture. Well, thanks so much for your time. This is all foundational about what business analytics is, how it's emerged, what big data is and how to manage it, how to look at the different types of measures and variables that are out there because these words will come back in these concepts in the future lectures so make sure we understand these foundational elements and concepts because we will dive in further about how they're used in deeper analytics and types of analytics further thanks so much for your time in reviewing chapter one